we'd like to take the offering at this time. Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for how you've provided for us. Father, we could not have a thing if it were not for you and for your graciousness to us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give back to you that which you've bestowed upon us and help us, Lord, to use it wisely in this church and in this congregation. Father, help us to use it to further your kingdom, to lift up your name and to glorify you in all that we do and all that we say and all the things that we engage in as a congregation, that they might be a blessing to your name above all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We need to sing those two choruses, don't you think? Yes. another chorus. I'm on the faith line. Remember it? I'm on the faith line, the good old faith line. It's the line that takes us through to the land beyond the blue. I'll tell the story from earth to I'm on the faith line, the good old faith line. It's the line that takes us through to the land beyond the blue. I'll tell the story from earth to glory. How the Savior saves and keeps and satisfies. Turn in your hymnals to page... 341, page 341.
song tonight. Page 261. Oh, how I love Jesus. 261. Hang on just a minute. June 1585, I married a young lady named Marilyn Sams. <laughs> and we've been married for 29 years. <laughs> and when we first got married, neither one of us was saved. And we went probably six, seven years, and then we decided to, to go a different route. And it's been a glory. It's been a wonderful time. We have ups and downs at times, but boy, we uh, we keep together. We do things together, and we love the Lord together. And we're glad to be here together. And we love all you people together too. <laughs> and we give the Lord thanks for bringing us together in the first place. Because I I, I don't I was I I had the first time finding a wife first time. I didn't think I'd never find a second one. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord took care of us, and he's been with us all, all along. And there's been times when 
things went wrong a little bit. Yeah, we, was, what, we was going home from church uh, uh, one morning, and we got cleared by a block from our house, and we lost a tie rod. We could have lost it out there on the road somewhere, but it, at least we were that close to home. <laughs> so yeah, he's always taking care of you. <laughs> Amen. Congratulations Amen. to the two of you. That's an accomplishment. Yeah. I'm sure there's some here in the congregation that has a lot more years than that, but... 29 years, congratulations to both of you. Any other testimonies tonight? And Brother Joe, did you have a song? I thought I heard you say... Okay, well, what do you have? 176. And if somebody has a testimony, we'll get it after we sing this song. As we sang this song, Oh, How I Love Jesus... It brought back memories to when I was a kid and the church that we were attending. And you know how you're taught to testify, to tell what God has done for you or whatever. But they stress testimonies in that church as well. And just as a kid, we would stand up and say, I love Jesus because he first loved me. <laughs> and that was our testimony when we were kids. And, of course, we're shaking as we get up and we'd say that. <laughs> But it is a testimony. He first loved us, and that's why we love him. Page 176. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your love? three things mentioned in that chorus that we need. His power. In ourselves, we can do nothing. But his power can make us what we ought to be. His blood. We all need the cleansing of Jesus' blood in our souls. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. And his love can fill your soul and you will see that it's best for him to have his way in you. Beautiful words. Which one? 208, page 208. <laughs> Time of reaping, wish 
Page 38 in your little spiral bound book. been a while since we sang this so we're gonna have to relearn it together are you ready <clears throat> I am satisfied in Jesus what a sweet soul rest I feel when life's greatest burdens press me he doth all my sorrows heal I am Simply faith in Jesus. 
McDonald. Page 270 in our hymnal. Amazing Grace. We sang that this morning. 270, oh, but it is a very good song. Yes. Have you got the words with you? You'll have to lead it if you don't. I heard you quoting it, and there's another verse, too. The Lord has been so good to me, something like that. But we don't have those words either, so we'll have to find them. Page 270. <coughs> okay, that will be verse 5. Words to the next line are, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow, and the sun forbear to shine, but God who's called me here below shall be forever mine. Let's try that. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below shall be forever mine. Sister Kathy said, do it again. <laughs> The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below shall be forever.
That was graceful, huh? <laughs> um, I mentioned a song this morning, and it's been on my heart ever since. I'm willing, Lord, to go. You bear with me and my guitar, because it may be out of tune. It doesn't like the changes of humidity coming from my house to here and being in the back of the car. It doesn't sound too bad. God gave his son for me upon Mount Calvary. He gave his precious blood to set me free. And I never could repay the sacrifice he made. But with my life, I'll pay the debt I owe. I'm willing, Lord, to go, and I'm willing, Lord, to stay. I'm ready, Lord, to do thy perfect will. And if valleys I must cross to do thy will, O God, then I'll walk them, Lord, or climb the highest hill. I can hear the Master say, lift up your eyes today. It is time to reap the golden harvest grain. Yes, there's work for you to do. My strength I'll give to you. There are millions who have never heard my name. And I'm willing, Lord, to go. And I'm willing, Lord, to stay. I'm ready, Lord, to do thy perfect will. And if valleys I must cross to do thy will, O oh God, then I'll walk them, Lord, or climb the highest hill. Yes, I walk them, Lord, or climb the highest hill. It's been a while since I played the guitar, but it's a beautiful old song. One of these days, I'm going to get Rena to sing it with me or sing something with me because she has a beautiful voice, and I love to try to harmonize to her voice as we sing different songs. So y'all pray for her, because I'm going to be working on it. <laughs> that really wasn't necessary. <laughs> Is my mic on? Yep. Good. Thank you. If you would, let's turn in our Bibles to Psalms chapter 61. I was thinking about Father's Day and what it means to be a father, examples of a father, talk to my own father, talk to my heavenly father. <laughs> Just really focusing in on fathers this afternoon and thinking about um, what direction to go. And um, I thought this Psalms of 61 gives us a beautiful picture of what our, of our Heavenly Father's love for us and what we should be and what we should strive to be as fathers for our children, for our grandchildren, for all of our family. And this passage of Scripture really just spoke to my heart. And um, let's read it and see what we can 
discern for it and what God has got from it, got for us from this passage of Scripture. Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth I will cry unto Thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For Thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in Thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of Thy wings. Selah. For Thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear Thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Father's Day. I can't think of a better place, as I said, that I would rather be than here worshiping my Heavenly Father. And this passage of Scripture gives me a vivid picture of His love and His compassion, His concern for me. The psalmist here cries out to God. In the very first verse, he says, Hear my cry, O God, and attend to my prayer. When I think about a biblical father and what a father should be, this passage of Scripture reminds me that my father both heavenly and my earthly father, both taught me that they were there to hear my cries. They were there to hear my prayers. There are so many times that I can look back in my life that I've cried out to God for help. And He has been so faithful. He's been there so many times. And then I look at my earthly father and I can't tell you how many times that I've turned to my dad and had a problem, had a burden, had a need. And my earthly father was there. Both my Heavenly Father and my Earthly Father have taught me a great deal about what it means to be a father. When my children are hurting, when your grandchildren are hurting, when your children are hurting, the greatest thing that we can do is sit down and take time to be with them. Take time to listen to their concerns. Take time to listen to the things that are troubling them. Amen. We might not have all the answers as a heavenly, I mean, as an earthly being, we don't have all the answers. But if we will just stop, take the time to sit down and listen, do you know how many kids go through this life without anybody to listen to them? Without anybody to take the time to hear them and just hear what they got to say? Let me tell you something. You sit down with a troubled kid and you give them a listening ear, you won't have to speak a word, they'll just pour it out. It just pours out of them. Finally, somebody cares enough to listen to me. Amen. Somebody cares enough about me to take the time to listen to me. And David says that in the very first verse. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We need a person in our lives and children need a person in their lives to turn us towards God. To help us be established on the rock of Jesus Christ. On the truth of God's Word. This is what David is crying out for here. He says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Give me something that's more solid than I, this world around me. When I'm in the troubles, when I'm in those circumstances where my heart is overwhelmed, I can't tell you how many times that my heart has been overwhelmed. And I turn towards God. And He gives me something out of His Word to stand on. Something to reassure me. Something to give me comfort. Something to give me peace in my life and in my soul. That's a very special experience. One of the times it comes just to my mind because it's been so recent. As I stood there leaving Virginia, and I looked at that old place, Man, this is an idyllic setting. I can't believe I'm leaving here. God just spoke to me, John 14. In my Father's house there are many mansions. Oh, praise the Lord. There are many mansions in my Father's house. Not that I had a mansion back in Virginia. I just had a beautiful, peaceful setting. I lived out in the country. Nobody around me but family and friends. Peaceful, idyllic setting. But you know what? God gave me a peace that was greater than that. He gave me something 
real. He gave me something solid. He gave me His Word that spoke to my heart, that reassured me, that settled me, that gave me peace, that gave me comfort in the emotions that I was going through. And that's what every child needs. That's what you need as God's child. That's what your children, your literal children need, your grandchildren need. They need someone who will turn them to the Word of God that will lead them to the rock that is higher than them. Because all of us need something that's higher than us. None of us are able to sustain ourselves by ourselves, but we need something higher. We need something greater. We need something more solid, more firm, more fixed forever. That's what we need. That's what I need. 42-year-old child that I am. And that's what you need, whether you're 70 or you're 80 or whatever age you're at, you're still a child of God. And from time to time, you need someone to lead you to that rock that's higher than you. Even this little man right here, probably what, 12 years old? Amen. You need somebody to lead you to a rock that's higher than you sometimes, don't you? Because life gets hard. Amen. People at his age in school, people pick on kids like this. They make fun of them. They do all kinds of crazy things. Amen. And children need someone to lead them to something greater. Amen. The rock that is higher than they are. Coming on down through, the, well, I wanted to share with you about my earthly father. The more I think about him, the more um, thankful that I am. A man of great faith. Man of great action. He's a very high-strung man. He jumps to the gun sometimes. He's, he's a little nervous. He's high-strung. But let me tell you something. That man's got faith. I've seen that man time and time again on his knees praying. He was the one that spoke the words that led me back to Christ. He was the one that said, David, you need to get your life straightened out. You need to get your kids back into church. Amen. I don't know how old your children are, but don't give up on them. Don't write them off. You keep reminding them gently when the Holy Spirit leads you and directs you. You speak to them. Son, daughter, you need to come back to the rock that's higher than you. Amen. I had, a heavenly, I had an earthly father and still have an earthly father who is faithful in his faith towards God. He is faithful in the Word of God. He is faithful in prayer. And what an example he is to me. The longer I live, the more I understand the wisdom that He imparted through His simple example. Amen. You don't have to be wise. You don't have to be this brilliant intellectual person. You just need to be faithful to God's Word. Faithful to what He teaches you. Faithful to your children to remind them of their need for something greater and higher than they are. Amen. Don't give up on your children. Don't quit attempting to lead them and guide them and direct them. They need you more than they realize. And if they'll humble themselves, they'll realize and they'll know. When the troubled times come, they know where they can turn. Amen. They know where to turn for prayer. They know where to turn when things get hard on them. They turn towards their parents who've been faithful to the Word of God. If you come on down in verse 3, it says, For thou hast been a shelter for me. And a strong tower from the enemy. <laughs> Praise God. You want to know what it means to be a father or a mother? Here it is right here. For thou hast been a shelter to me. And a strong tower from the enemy. Shelter your kids. Protect your kids. Be a solid place in their lives. Be a dependable, faithful person in their lives. Because God has given us that example. That's what God was to David. That's what God has been to me. And I hope that's what God has been to you. He has been faithful. He has been that strong tower. He has been that shelter for me so many times. Amen. I don't, when my wife was dealing with dizziness and they thought she had MS, who was my strong tower that I run to? God. Amen. As a little boy, when I had troubles... I got in trouble or I did something wrong or I had some kind of emergency, what did I do? I run to my strong tower. Daddy! Daddy! I need your help. Amen. You know what he was? He was a sheltering influence. You know what you should be for your children? For your grandchildren? 
that sheltering influence. That place that they can come to and find shelter. That place where they can come to and find uh, consistency. Throughout life. Be consistent. Be a consistent grandparent. Be a consistent mother. Not that you reward bad behavior. Because if you go on over a little bit further, this thing says, Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. See, if you're going to be a wise parent, if you're going to be a wise um, family or a grandparent or parent or father, you've got to not only have mercy, but you've got to have truth also. Because if it's all mercy, you'll just become enabling to that child that's disobedient. Enabling to that child that's in trouble constantly. But if you bring truth and mercy, oh, what a blessing it is to future generations that they can see something consistent. They can see a type, a figure of what God's mercy and what God's grace and what God's truth looks like by our examples. I will... I will abide in thy tabernacle forever, and I will trust in the covert of thy wings. I will trust in the protection of thy wings, of thy secret place. That's what that word covert means, the secret place of thy wings. Can you see our Heavenly Father right now? That secret place that we can escape to, where we can find comfort, where we can find peace in the midst of our troubles. When things get too hot in this life, when troubles get too heavy, we turn towards our Heavenly Father and seek for that secret place, that secret hiding place where we can go and escape the pressures of this life. I can't tell you how many times that my mother and father have been that place for me in my life. And the more I look back, the more I understand that I need to be that place for my daughters. That place... Just last night, my oldest daughter come through me, come to me really troubled, pouring out her heart. You know, I could have made it a hundred times worse if I'd have just, you know, and really got strict with her and really laid down the law and spoke a lot of truth. There was a time for truth. Amen. There was a time for truth, but that wasn't it. That was the time she needed some protection. She needed some covering. She needed a secret place. Amen. Do you realize how many children need someone just to take them under the wing? Provide that place of comfort. Provide that place of security for them. Amen. I see a little bit of that in, in what Brother Donnie has been doing over the course of the last couple of months. I don't know how long he's been involved, but there's two little girls that come with him tonight. And they got a really troubled life, but they found some consistency in that man right there. Donnie Dickerson. You wouldn't think it. You'd look at him and say, well, what kind of life could he provide? He couldn't provide them with much monetarily, but he can provide them with consistent love. Amen. Someone who cares about them. Someone who will listen to them. Someone who will do something for them. He has provided consistency in their life. I thank him for that. That's a biblical example of being a father. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. These things here are for our learning, for our instruction as parents, that we might grow, that we might even, as grandparents, develop these attitudes, develop these mindsets of not always spewing out the truth, not always uh, tearing down, not always condemning. But there are times for love. There are times for compassion. There are times when people are hurting. And they need something. They need someone to be that place of protection and that hiding place for them. For thou, O God, verse 5, hast heard my vows, and thou hast given me a heritage of those that fear thy name. O oh, praise the Lord for the name of God. He has given me a heritage. He adopted me into his family. He made me one of his children. I am one of his family now. I bear his name. 
And you know something? That means something in this world. A name means something. My earthly father gave me a name. He adopted me when I was 11 days old. He and my mother adopted me. And they give me their name. And now I have a heritage. I have a possession here on this earth. I have an identity. You want to know what? Kids need identity. The school system, the government, everything around us is doing everything they can to strip away their identity. They need identity. They need to know who they are, where they come from. You can go back in Almar County and you name the name of Frazier and it means something. They know what kind of family you grew up in. They know how you was raised. They know the, consistent, the consistency that they can find in you. Why? Because of the inheritance that my father gave me. Through his name, through the raising that he brought me up through. And let me tell you something, your heavenly Father has given you something so much more beautiful and so much more heavenly and so much more powerful than any earthly name that you could ever give. He has given you His name. You are His child now. That means something in this world. When you tell someone that you are a Christian, it should mean something. Absolutely, it should mean something. When you name that name, when you say, I'm a child of God, there should be a consistency in your life. There is a heritage that goes along with that name. And I became aware of that in my earthly life when people would see me doing things that I knew wasn't right. Say, hey boy, what's your name? Uh, David Frazier. You know your mom and daddy didn't raise you like that. What are you doing over there doing that stuff? Amen. The name means a lot. When you're doing things and you're calling yourself a Christian that are not compatible with a Christian life, you're dishonoring your heritage. You're dishonoring your father's name. You're dishonoring all that's been established and went before you. He has given us a heritage. He has given us something that we can hold on to that will give others around us information about who you are and what you stand for. See, that's why the devil is doing everything he can to, to confuse the definition of a Christian. If he can confuse it to where nobody even knows what you stand for anymore as a Christian, he's done a great work. He's done a great work. But when you say, I'm a Christian, that should mean you stand for a certain set of ideals that should be unchanging and everlasting. Amen. Why? Because it's God's name. It's God's covenants. It's God's law. It's God's words. And it never changes. It never varies. It never fluctuates. It's consistent. It's eternal. Coming on down to the last part of that verse. Well, verse 7. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. I've already talked to you a little bit about the need for both mercy and truth when we're dealing with our children. I'm so thankful for the mercy of God. If it wasn't for the mercy of God, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. None of us would. We would all be lost on our way to hell. But because of His mercy, because of His love, because of His grace, we are here tonight. Because He loved you before you first loved Him. You loved him, if, yeah, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen, he loves you. But if he just extolled love constantly, just like if you have a child and all you do is you show love and mercy and you never bring any tr truth or correction into that child's life, you're going to raise a monster. A monster. Trust me. You go down here to the supermarket and you can find some of them. They're little, they think they're little gods. Because all their life, all they've said is, oh, it's fine, it's good, little Johnny. Oh, it'll be, now you shouldn't do that. Amen. And yet they're laying on the floor in Walmart screaming and kicking at 10 years old. Ridiculous. What happened? There never was truth. There never was correction. There never was truth instilled in that little life. It was all mercy. Either that or it was all just uh, ignoring them completely. We see a beautiful picture here. 
of being an earthly father or earthly parent compared to our Heavenly Father. He's left us a great example. And we are to be an example to the next generation. Wherever they, that we can influence them, we need to be that example in their lives. You have been given a privilege as an earthly father. A privilege to shape young minds. As mothers too, you've been given a privilege to shape a young person's image of what God is and who God is. And so much more what you do influences that than what you say. You can say a lot of things, but if you don't back it up with what you do, it means nothing. It's useless. But we've been given a great privilege. I was privileged with a wonderful father here on earth. I wish he could be here closer to me. But since he's not, I'm still going to praise his name. And you might be here tonight, and you might be 90 years old, and your dad's been dead for 50 years, but if he was a good father, you can still praise his name. You can still give him the praises. You can still honor him by how you act and what you say in this life. And if you've got your father here tonight, praise the Lord. Give him some praise. Recognize him for what he's done. Because he's helped you. If he hasn't helped you, your heavenly father has been that example. And he's helped you. Maybe you didn't have a good father. Maybe your father wasn't this... A uh, wonderful father that I had. Maybe you never met your father. Maybe he left and, um, you know, whatever. But your heavenly father, he's been everything that we described in this book. He's been everything to you tonight that we just read about. He's been that shelter. He's been that strong tower. He's been that rock that's, that you've gone to. He's been the one that's heard your prayers. He's been that hiding place, that secret place to comfort you and protect you. He's been the one to bring truth. And most of all, He's been the one to bring mercy into your life. Amen. You've got a lot to be thankful for this evening. And we've got a lot to live up to. Now, I'm a human being. I'm never going to get it 100% right. Ask my girls, they'll tell you. They love to tell about their dad failing. All you got to do is ask Rena. She'll tell you all about it. <laughs> She loves to get at me. But I've got an awesome responsibility to try and impart to her what it means to be a good father. The only examples that I have, my earthly father and my heavenly father. I'm thankful for two good examples in my life and for all that both of them have done for me. And most of all, for salvation. I wrote at the bottom of my notes here this the song Oh How I Love Jesus. He came and taught us all about the Heavenly Father. <laughs> oh how I love Him for that. He came and taught us how to be fathers. He gave us instructions on how to go about this thing of rearing kids. And I'm thankful that if we are obedient to God's Word, we can be a blessing to who knows how many generations out there into the future. All because we were faithful to God's Word. Amen. You grow up and you've been a Christian all your life. and You've been faithful to God. Let me tell you, that's going to have impacts down the road somewhere. You're going to be, inter inter You're going to be affecting generations that you don't even, haven't even met and never will meet. But if you neglect your duties, you're going to also affect them in the wrong way. Amen. I'll leave the simple thoughts with you this evening. I just wanted to share that with you. I really thought it was important to draw that comparison of what God has been to us and what we should be to our children. I don't think we need a song this evening. We're just going to close with a word of prayer. And... Um, Christian, would you like to close us out in prayer? Yes, if you could speak in this microphone. Are you a Christian? Your name is Christian. 
How long have you been a Christian? Um, well, most of my life I've known Jesus, but like a year ago, I've been known him. Hold on. Like hold, a hold, year hold. Ago. Give your testimony right there. All right. Well, I always known Jesus, but until like a year ago, until my mom really made this big decision, i never been closer. Have you asked Jesus into your heart? Yes, I have. Praise the Lord. Well, you just heard a little bit about what it means to be a father. So as you grow up, young man, take those words to heart. Because you can help your children. You can be such a blessing to them. One day, I know it's hard to even think about children at this point, but one day you will affect future generations by being faithful to God's word. Thank you for being willing to pray for us and dis dismiss us this evening. If you would, go ahead. Lord, we want you to make everything go in your will today and every day. We want you to bless everyone here and everyone not here. We want everything to be in your will. Please make everything just go right. And please get Satan off our back. And I want to pray the blood of Jesus over everything the trees, the animals, my dad, my mom, everybody, and everything. Lord, please help us through every day and every night. And please just show us the way you want us to be, Lord. And again, Please get the devil off our back. And please help everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I'm glad he said get the devil off our backs. Thank you, brother.